Hi guys, this is True Vine, your prophetess Catherine. So um, today my prophetic audio guys will be um, speaking of the verse that the Lord has been giving me, which is Luke 23, okay? And um, today uh, we will be looking at the title of this audio is um, the Innocence Church, Luke 23, 1 to 25, okay? So you guys, today it's a Passover day and um, the Holy Spirit have led me to actually make an audio, um, prophetic audio to discussing about this topic. So um, here we have, okay, the biggest mistakes in history we have ever seen of law when the judgment against an innocent man was passed. Today we will be looking at um, the book of Luke chapter 23. So I want you to see before we're done today, an innocent man, our Lord Jesus Christ here, okay, is sentenced to die. I hope by the time that we have done, you're going to see your role in this sentence and your responsibility for the sentence that Jesus Christ had endured for us. So here the verse 23, Luke 23, 1 to 7. Then the entire council took Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor. They began to state their case. This man has been leading our people astray by telling them not to pay their taxes to the Roman government. And by claiming he is the Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you have said it. Pilate turned to the leading priests and to the crowd and, find, uh, and said, I find nothing wrong with this man. Then they became insistent, but he is causing riots by his teaching wherever he goes, all over Judea, from Galilee to Jerusalem. Oh, he is a Galilean. Pilate asked. When they said that he was, Pilate sent him to Herod and Taipas because Galilee was under Herod's jurisdiction and Herod be, happened to be in Jerusalem at the time. So here you guys, I want you to notice a few things about what we are reading here. Luke skips over a couple of other trials that Jesus goes through to get straight to the point. Okay, he takes Jesus to the last court case before the Roman official. This is Holy Week. This is the most holy day of the year of the Jew. So Pontius Pilate insists representatives in Palestine. Pilate's office is in a city called... Uh, Caesarea, Philippi. That's where he normally does business, but because this is the Holy Week, there's often a problem in Jerusalem during Holy Week. Pilate decided to leave Caesarea and to come to Jerusalem to make sure that everything goes okay. Pilate is probably thinking to himself, boy, did I pick up the wrong day to leave the office. <laughs> Now these Jewish leaders and religious leaders have come to Pilate with this problem. They bought this rebel for Pilate and they made the three okay, specific charges against him. So the very fact that they are okay, taking this court case to the Roman authorities on the holy day itself, right, it is a sin. They are working on the Sabbath, which is a sin. And they are violating their own law to do this. Which say how bad they hate Jesus and how much they wanted him dead on that day. The Jews don't have the authority to kill a man on a holy day. They want Jesus dead today. They determine that this man, Jesus Christ, need to be dead today. So they are going to take him, okay, to the one guy 
who can kill them and try to convince Pilate to pass a death sentence against Jesus. They bring three charges against Jesus. The first charge that they bring against him is that he's leading the Jewish nation astray and that he is seducing Israel away from Rome. The Rome. And the second charge was, okay, um, they bring against him is that he's opposing paying taxes. However, this is a flat out lie. If you know the story from the book of Luke, Jesus was confronted by this man about taxes, and he said to them to render unto Caesar that which belonged to Caesar, but give to God that which belonged to God. Jesus said to pay your taxes, a wish he wouldn't have because it would be easier on me if Jesus said don't pay your tax, right? Hallelujah. <laughs> what they're saying is just um, a bald-faced lie to the pilot. But they want Jesus dead. Pilate doesn't entertain the first two charges. He goes immediately to the crux of the matter. Jesus is claiming to be a king since he's claiming to be a king. He's claiming to have authority over the Jewish people. So, more authority, this I guess what's in his head, more authority than Caesar, Pilate says. Is this true, Jew? Jesus, are you claiming to be a king? He doesn't even care about the first two charges, right? He jumps straight to the third, power-hungry mind, and um, he wanted to know the fact that Jesus is really a king of the Jew. Jesus never get a fair trial. He doesn't get a fair trial from um, Pilate today. He doesn't get a fair trial from the Jewish leaders. He doesn't get a fair trial from Herod. He doesn't get a fair trial from, in fact, anybody. You can tell Pilate wants nothing to do with this and he finds an easy out. Pilate says, wait a second, Jesus is from this area called Galilee. This is not my problem. That problem belonged to the Jewish ruler in the area of Galilee. He wrote Antipas, I hope I pronounced it right, but sent Jesus to Herod and let Herod deal with this guy. I don't want anything to do with it because he is Galilean. Did you notice that there is no time in this passage Thus Jesus says, hey, you are, wait a second, I'm innocent. In fact, right? When the charge brought against him, Jesus could have, should have declared he's innocent, but he never did. He was led like a lamb to the slaughterhouse, and he was silent when the charge was brought against him. How many of you in this room, okay, um, here, in totally, I believe, in totally obedience. This is a totally obedience act. So here, um, Jesus should have and could have stood up, right, and say that he was innocent, this charge of August, right, totally outright, outright lies. But he doesn't. He willingly allow himself, okay, to take these charges. So which um, lead us to see the reason why Jesus allowed himself to take these charges because Jesus is about to answer to somebody much bigger than this law, than this man of higher, of authority, right? He is about to answer to the most highest in authority of them all, which is Jesus knows ultimately God the Father is his judge you and I will ultimately answer to this righteous judge. To God in heaven, whose judgment is always perfect. These people got it wrong really bad when it comes to um, the case against Jesus. Jesus knew it's God in heaven that I will stand before one day. That's what helped Jesus take our charges. It goes from bad to worse from Jesus from here though. Um, so Pilate was pretty um, clever. You have to give him credit for that. 
right? He said to everyone, I don't want anything to do with this case. I don't want anything to do with this guy by the name of Jesus. Send him to Herod and Herod deal with him. Herod is not interested in truth. He just wants to be entertained. When that doesn't happen, Herod, his soldier, and all of these religious leaders start to mock, criticize, and make fun of Jesus for the truth and for claiming to be the Son of God. The king of Jew, Herod, could have stepped in right here and stopped this whole trial. It could have ended in a moment, but it doesn't. Herod's not interested, so he sent Jesus back to Pilate. Now Jesus is Pilate's problem again. So Luke wants you to hear something very carefully. Jesus suffering fixed broken relationship. The biggest broken relationship is between God and man. It is my sin and your sin that broke our relationship with the God. That's the very reason why Jesus came to earth. Jesus' suffering also fixed broken relationship between people. Right? So, do you have a friend that's a believer in Jesus Christ? Who things are not right between you and them right now? Is there another brother and sister that should be in, you know, with you right now that you are not in agree with, that you are mad with? That's right. Learn from the Bible today, guys. Jesus suffering ultimately to fix and restore the relationship between sinful people and holy people. No, sorry, between sinful people and holy God. But he also can restore relationship between two believers who are just out of joint or who are not walking arm in arm with each other. Jesus is enduring all of this because he wants to honor his upper father in heaven, right? So sometimes people are going to criticize you. They even going to make gossip about you, they're going to make fun about you, they're going to be doubt about you and boldly accuse you of something. And in return, that will hurt your feeling. You and I can't even imagine how bad this hurts, Jesus. If you are saying, I really care about what God think about me, then people around me think about me, you would be willing to accept the hurt. It doesn't hurt any less, but you'll be willing to accept the hurt when people criticize you because Jesus went through all of this for you and I, right? Jesus took your guilty verdict. He took my condemnation. This is what the Bible teaches us here in this book, which is the passage that I am going, we're going to move to next. Luke 23, 13 to 25, right have if you read this account in the book of john you would know that Pilate is so frustrated that he takes out a basin okay of water and wash his hand in front of the crowd and says what you're doing is wrong this man is innocent if you proceed in this i'm going to wash my hand of this whole event his blood is going to be on your head the crowd said Absolutely, we will take his blood on our head. We don't want that kind of leader. We want a leader like Barabbas, who will lead a revolt, revolt and throw off the chains of Rome. So, <laughs> right, we feel sorry for pilots here, right? He tried, he tried. I, I mean, if you watch in a movie, he, he so tried very hard to change the Jewish mind. But pay, pay close attention, okay, what Luke said three times about Pilate, what he, had, what, they, what he had said. This man is innocent and still he sentenced Jesus to die, at least for the religious leaders. They believed Jesus was guilty and they wanted him dead. In Pilate's case, it's worse because he's a coward. Yes, I believe that's probably what he'll be thinking, doing something he doesn't believe in. He know in his heart that Jesus is innocent. And so what Pilate did was, you know, remain in guilt of murder. 
he just sentenced who he knows to be innocent man to die. This crowd is happy though that he did that to take the punishment or to take the penalty for crying out for Jesus' death. So, mm. so the reason why Jesus was willing to go like a lamb to the slaughter, the reason why he didn't stand up and shout his innocence was because he was more concerned about following and be obedient to the absolute, absolute act of obedience to the Father, the Heavenly Father plan. Even, even the end of his life here on earth, he was willing to submit, right? Totally submit, if necessarily, to follow the command of God. In other words, honoring his Father in heaven was more important than even preserving his own life. So, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ and you want to be like Jesus, then you and I should have the same kind of radical commitment. God, even if you ask my life from me, I will give it because honoring you is more important than anything else around me. I know it's tempting for you because it's tempting for me to listen to applause of the crowd. I know you probably want to have 10,000 people like what you said on Facebook, but keep this in mind. The crowd is fickle and they turn on you tomorrow like a flip of an hand as quickly as they turn to you today. So that's this crowd is a perfect example of that. So guys. Jesus perspective. Right, let's look at his perspective. Let's stop. For just a second and look for it from a different perspective. Imagine that you are Barabbas. I want you to imagine that you are guilty. You know you're guilty and everybody around you know the guilt. That They know that you're guilty. You've been convicted, sentenced to die and you're on death row waiting for next ex, ex, uh, execution. While you're on the death row, another prisoner moves into the cell next to you. You've heard about this guy and you may have an opportunity to talk to this guy. Jesus is an innocent man. Imagine that you're standing there when Pilate say, do you want Barabbas, the murderer, and the insurrectionist, or do you want Jesus, the innocent man, to be released? <laughs> the crowd, of course, says, give us Barabbas. Imagine what going through his mind in that five minutes after he had been released. The guilt this man must have felt because he knew the person next to him, right, was innocent. So Luke makes a story of us for us today so that you and I confronted, right, with this question. Who's really at fault for sentencing Jesus to die? Is it religious leader or herald? Antipas, that is ultimately at fault for this, um, for Jesus' death, or is it the crowd, right? So what I call the great exchange, he's the great exchange. Your sin has forever broken your relationship. You can't clean this sin up. You can't be a good person. You can't earn your way to heaven. That's not how the system works. So God stepped into your mess and took the initiator. God sent his son Jesus who lived as pure, perfect and holy life. He never did anything wrong. Um, Jesus took your guilt and con in your condemnation and my condemnation, okay? The verdict on himself. When you surrender your soul to Jesus Christ, this is what happened, okay, at this transaction. God takes every sin, every thought, every action, and every attitude and places it on the back of his son, Jesus. Jesus' death is payment for your sin and mine. 